Hi, this is Rui Neves Silva. Welcome to Control Theory. Today's session is about introducing systems and their models. Why do we love models? Because models allow us to extract relevant characteristics of systems and drive us towards a solution. Imagine you developing a system like an electronic circuit without any prior drawing or model. It just won't work. At the same time, it is important that we don't lose perspective of the real system and its limitations. As this picture of the famous painter Magritte tells us, this is not a pipe. Of course it isn't. This is just a drawing of a pipe, not the pipe itself. The model is just a representation of the real thing. A very useful one, but not the real thing. So, modeling is indeed a critical activity in all engineering processes, but don't get carried away on the process. Sometimes we go a little bit over the top. Developing a relevant model has costs that pay off in its accuracy. If you want a better model, it requires more time, efforts and money. So where to stop? You have to check if the additional effort is paying off on the additional accuracy. We will be representing a system, for instance our client's plant, with a box with an input and an output. The output of the system is a consequence of the input. These signals are represented by arrows. We already know that this block is not the system but just its model. This semester we will be working with continuous time systems. A continuous time system means that the input is a continuous time signal and the output is a continuous time signal. Just that. For instance, if you have an amplifier with gain 2, you could represent the model as the output is 2 times the input. In this case, the output at time t depends only on the input at time t, which means that this is a static system without any dynamic. But you know that if you want to work with a more interesting system, like controlling an airplane, for instance, its speed at time t will depend on more than the input at time t, but also its past. This is because an airplane is a dynamic system. So our objective in this course is to develop solutions to dynamic systems. The challenge is exactly about changing the behavior of the dynamic system. We want, for example, that an airplane be easier to land during crosswinds. From the knowledge that you have from other courses on this program, you know that dynamics means variation in time and that means differential equations. In this model, we can read that the change of the output with time t is dependent on the input signal, as in the previous example, but now also dependent on the output itself. What is the advantage of working with this framework of differential equations? Let us see this case. What can a mechanical suspension and an electric antenna have in common? Not much, right? If we use the laws of mechanics to model this system, we come up with a second order differential equation like this where coefficients a1 and a2 are computed from the mechanical characteristics of the components. In a similar way, if we use the laws of electric circuits to model the antenna, we also come up with a second order differential equation where coefficients a1 and a2 are computed from the electric characteristics of the components. You see the point? By modeling the dynamic systems as differential equations, we get the common framework, which means that, at a certain stage, it doesn't matter if you are controlling a mechanical, a chemical, electrical, or whatever, you are just developing a solution to a dynamic system. An important distinction that we'll be making is about the linearity of the system, as the linear models are nice and easy. What is the practical meaning of linearity? If you excite the system with an input, you get a reaction. And now, if you delay or scale the input, 
your output will be delayed and scaled by the same factors. This linearity thing is asking too much, as in general nature is non-linear, but still enjoyable. So, in general, we won't be having a straight line around the origin. The system will not be linear. But when we talk about control, it means that we want to keep the system in a specific operating region. So we can redefine the position of the origin inside the operating region and make a linear approximation of your model. And this pays off. So let us introduce the main properties that will characterize the system or its model. The first is linearity, which means scalability and the superposition property. If you know the reaction of the system to two different signals, when you apply a combination of these two signals, you get a scalable combination of its reactions. The second property is time invariance. If a system has always the same reaction to a specific input, no matter the time of the day or the week or the year, the system is said to be time invariant. The third important property is causality. It means that the reaction is a consequence of the excitation at the input. In practical terms, the system will not react before the occurrence of the excitation. The system is then said to be causal. OK, so let us get back to the differential equations and finding solutions out of them. Imagine a problem such as the one represented by the differential equation, where the input is a step signal, represented here by the Greek letter epsilon, and the initial condition of the output y is zero. You already know how to solve this, so stop the video and take a few minutes to find the evolution of the output with time. Yes, stop it now and solve it there on the piece of paper to fill the difficulties of solving these problems. Is it done already? So the solution goes like this. First you propose the structure of a solution and because the derivative of the exponential function is also exponential function, this is the natural candidate. Then you replace the solution on the differential equation on top and compute the derivative on the left to find that the parameters that verify the equation. Final, you have your solution. Easy, right? And this was just first order and completely useless to our goal. We want to extract dynamic characteristics, not to simulate the system. So let us find what we want. This is the starting point. We will start this semester with linear time invariant systems or LTI systems. We get the impulse signal to excite the plant. This is represented by the grid letter delta. And we collect the reaction of the system to its impulse. This is called the impulse response. We take the linear time invariant system and its impulse response and we can compute the output of the system using the convolution product, which is another pain process. Let me just open a parenthesis here to dismissify this convolution product. Imagine you have your LTI system excited by an impulse and you register its impulse response H. And now Imagine that the impulse at the input has a duration delta. Below, you can take now any input u and break it down as a train of impulses with different amplitudes. You can take each of the input signals separately. And because you know the impulse response of the linear time invariant system, you know the response for each of these signals at different instants and amplitudes. The final solution is then the superposition of all these responses and this is represented by the sum or integral that we call the convolution product. 
But now we need something that put us forward and out of these integrals. And for that, we bring an integral transformation. So this is the Laplace transform. And we will be using the capital letter of the signal to represent its Laplace transform. Please note what I am saying. It's the Laplace transform of a signal, not of a system. Some things for you to register and remember. Computing the Laplace transform of the input signal, you get 1. Computing the Laplace transform of the step signal, you get 1 over s, where s is the Laplace variable. A more complex signal, such as the exponential function, you get this fraction where parameter a is the one scaling time on the signal. And you have a table for all types of signals, if you need more than this. This slide is different because it's about the property of the Laplace transform. If you make the derivative of a signal x, what happens to its Laplace transform? Right, you multiply it by s. And here we start to see the advantage of including the Laplace transform, because we will be replacing derivatives by products. And if you derivate several times, you just multiply by the Laplace variable several times. Good. So now we take the convolution product and the Laplace transform, and after a few mathematical steps, we get the concept of transfer function of a system. So this is the transfer function, HS. But apples and orange don't mix up. You have the Laplace transform of a signal and the transfer function of a system. And the focus of this control course is completely on the systems. Thus, we will focus on this transfer function concept. So, we take the original system and we apply the Laplace transform to its input signal X and the output signal Y. What we have in between is the transfer function of the system. The transfer function is the output divided by the input, which is the same as to say that the output divided by the input results in the transfer function, which is the same as to say you can get the output by multiplying the transfer function by the input. So this is like beam me up, Scotty. So what happens here is that we'll be leaving the time domain and be transported to the Laplace domain. We go from the time domain to the frequency domain, which is dimensionally the inverse. So time in seconds, frequency in the inverse of time. So, before we add the system and its differential equation, Now we have the equivalent transfer function that will allow us to extract the dynamic behavior on a friendly way and design the controllers to modify that behavior. We will use the concept of transfer function in four different places during the semester. First, to describe the client's plant, FS. Second, to develop and describe the controller, CS. Third, to compute the resulting control system HS. And finally, which in fact will be in the beginning of the process, we will use the transfer function to specify the desired behavior H star S. If we take the same example again, no more pain. We start by deriving the transfer function directly from the differential equation we get the Laplace transform of the step signal, 1 over s. We multiply the transfer function by the step and we compare the signals with the transforms that are tabled and compute the output. No more pain even for higher orders. In any case, our path will not be through this type of problems. So coming soon, what's next? The objective of today's session 
was to introduce the transfer function as a convenient model for our systems. From the transfer function, we will collect all the information we need to design the controllers. Of course, we will feed the beast and things will become a little bit complex. But we will find ways to break down these challenges. For instance, this system footprint is something that you will be able to get directly from the transfer function and just by looking at it, take a lot of conclusions about the dynamic behavior. This is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Send me your feedback and press like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to get the rest of the story. Thank you. Bye-bye.